Have you ever wanted to play that old Metal Gear Solid game that you've never played? Have you wanted to play the first few God of War games? Have you always had the thought to play PS3 exclusive titles? Have you always wanted to buy an old used PS3 but you're worried about the blurry native resolution and other technical issues you might come across? Well, fear not, ladies and gentlemen, I've got you covered as I will show you how you can play those and most PlayStation 3 games on your Windows PC in this video. Hello everyone, it's Anderson Gaming here. In today's video, I'll be telling you about RPCS3, an open source emulator that emulates PlayStation 3 games on PC. It's also available on Linux and Mac OS, but I'll only be covering the Windows version in this video. Windows 10 to be more precise, or even Windows 11. I'll show you how you can set up RPCS3 and get to play PS3 games on your PC. Now before I begin this video, there are a few important things I want to mention. Number 1. I won't be showing you how to download game files for any PS3 game in this video. I don't condone piracy, especially as a YouTuber. If you've clicked on this video thinking that you'd be finding a way to download a PS3 game onto your PC, my sincerest and deepest apologies for wasting your time. I suggest that you stop watching this video right now if you've been misled. Number 2. I'm not responsible if anything goes wrong during the process of you following this video, so please proceed with caution, you've been warned. Number 3. Please note, trying to set up an emulator to run even a single game can take days, even weeks. Most of your time will be spent on research and gathering information. So make sure you have a lot of patience and time. Now all that being said, let's get into the video. Now here's what you need to emulate PlayStation 3 games on your PC. Firstly, you need a decent PC. When I say PC, I mean a desktop computer, not a laptop. RPCS3 requires a lot of processing power and is not a very easy emulator to run. It is also a CPU based emulator which means you need a really good CPU paired with either a mid-range or a high-end GPU. If you don't have a decent PC with decent hardware and you only have a laptop for reasons unknown, I suggest that you take a good look at your laptop specifications. I'll try my best to mention some decent laptop hardware in this segment, so continue watching if you are a laptop user. Now coming back to desktops, any good CPU and GPU from 2019 will do, considering this video is going to be released in mid-2024 and we are looking at PC components that are at least 5 years old. On the AMD side of CPUs, you'll need something above a Ryzen 5 2000 series CPU. For the Intel side, you'll need a 10th Gen i5 processor and above. Now let's talk GPUs. On the Nvidia side of GPUs, you'll need at least a GTX 1060 and above. Or if I must mention better, a 6GB NVIDIA card that has released after the year 2015 with DirectX 12 support. As for AMD GPUs, I recommend something like an RX 570 and above. To make more sense, a GPU that has anywhere from 4GB to 8GB VRAM. If you are an Intel GPU user, RPCS3 will not work so you are out of luck unfortunately. As for laptop hardware, don't expect to use integrated GPUs with RPCS3 such as Intel HD Graphics 3000, 4000, etc. or even AMD's offering. Your best option is the dedicated discrete graphics and even then I would not recommend laptops for emulation. Preferably the PC counterparts such as anything above the Pascal architecture for Nvidia i.e. the GTX 1060, 1660 Ti, 3050 etc. and on the AMD side the RX 5500M, 6700M etc. Secondly, you are definitely going to need a controller. Any plug and play controller will do you good such as the DualShock 4, the Xbox Series X or S controller etc. You can also try a third party controller with X input support such as the Red Gear Pro. If you can't afford any of the latest controllers but you do own a DualShock 3 or the Xbox 360 controller, I can try to make a video in the future but for now I'm only going to focus on the topic at hand. Lastly, of course, you are going to need the actual emulator program. In this video, we'll be covering the official build of RPCS3 which can be obtained from the official website. Now I'll show you how you can download, install and set up RPCS3. So let's begin.
All right, guys. So uh, here's my laptop. Uh, lo you're looking at my laptop, and I'm also recording uh, on my second main uh, PC over here. I've got the webcam turned on. So uh, here I am. Hello, guys. Hope you can see me. And uh, I'm using my laptop over here. So I'm using two <laughs> computers at the same time. Uh, so now what I'm going to be showing you is uh, how you can get the software. So firstly, what you're going to have to do is head on to your browser. I use Google Chrome and type RPCS3 and look it up. After that, uh, you can click on the main link, but do keep an eye on the links shown to you uh, on Google search. Over here, you can see rpcs3.net is the official site. You might come across certain other uh, false links, so be careful. Try not to click on those. Click on the website. Now, once you've loaded into the website, uh, it already tells you... <laughs> Uh, nice and clearly no piracy we do not condone piracy of any kind uh, it's only a software how you choose to get the games it's completely under your own discretion it's your business all right so let's continue uh, no piracy I understand now I'm making this video on a Windows 11 laptop uh, I did say Windows 10 but you can try it on Windows 10 if you do have it uh, so I would suggest uh, Windows 10 or Windows 11 for the most part if you want to run this uh, RPCS3 emulator. Now, if you're using an older version of Windows, um, I mean, you can try. But yeah, this video does not cover uh, any of those. Okay, so let's continue. Click on the download button here and you can see that there's an ad that popped up. Don't click on any of these ads and uh, yeah, scroll down. You can see the Windows version and then you can click on the download button. It should download and uh, looks like it is a uh, zip file. No problem. Windows does have an inbuilt uh, uncompression software. So we can open. Yeah, it's a 7Z format. So we just open it up. Open it via File Explorer over here. You can see uh, RPCS3 is located in the Downloads folder. And um, yeah, so if you scroll down, you can see the rpcs3 application now what i would suggest is copy all of them go back to the desktop you can create a new folder if you want uh, and you can name it rpcs3 in capital letters that way you can understand and then all you have to do is drag and drop everything to this folder over here it'll take a while all right, so we have finished copying all the files from the archive. Now, all you have to do is minimize it, close it, uh, open up the uh, RPCS3 folder. Now, what you can do alternatively is you can head on to your C drive over here and you can drag and drop the folder. So if you're using an SSD and your C drive is an SSD, a high speed SSD, PCIe Gen 3 or Gen 4, just place it over here so that you can launch games faster. And also, uh, if you have a secondary uh, SSD, uh, you can also drop this folder in here. So over here, we do have the RPCS3 folder with the actual emulator software located in here. So we'll open it up. Uh, you might get this warning, but click on run anyway, no problem. It's don't worry about it. It's not a virus. It's not it's not going to cause any problems. It is an, an official emulator, all right, so it, it's been approved. Just trust me on it, all right. So uh, as you can see, it's an open source Sony PlayStation 3 emulator and debugger. And uh, it's funded with Patreon and all that, you know, all, all, all the uh, all the verifiable stuff is mentioned here. So uh, main important point, it does say here to get started, you must first install the PlayStation 3 firmware. Uh, not going to be a, a hard thing. That's what we'll be doing. All right. And once again, in red, it says over here, RPCS3 does not condone piracy. You must dump your own games. I'll tell you what dumping means. So basically, what dumping means is uh, you're going to need a disc. All right. Uh, the actual Blu-ray PS3 disc of uh, whatever video game you want to emulate. So right now, I don't have any PlayStation 3 games, but, but I do have a couple of PS5 games over here. And uh, this is one of them. This is a PS4 game, actually, but I do have a PS5 game also. Now, these are all Blu-ray. Uh, I mean, they are all Blu-ray uh, discs, to be more specific. So what you're going to have to do is if you want to dump these games onto your computer, um, you know, to be more uh, detailed, if you want to 
extract all the files from a Blu-ray disc, then you're going to need a Blu-ray drive. You're going to need to have a custom firmware installed in order to ensure that the Blu-ray drive can indeed access the encrypted discs of the PS3 game. And then you're going to have to copy and dump it. And there's a whole lot of processing that goes into it. I, I can't get too in-depth in it because the video is not about that. Like I said, if you want, you can dump the games. How you choose to obtain the game files is up to you. It's your business. Uh, I don't really care. It's not my business. But uh, all I want to do is make a video showing you how you can get the games running. That's all. Apart from that, like I'm not going to show you where you can get the game files from. Uh, you know, it's not my business. So yeah, like it says over here, RPCS3 does not condone piracy. You must dump your own games. And now you know what dumping means. That's that's a whole lot of process. It takes days. It takes weeks. All right. Now, uh, even trying to get games running on this emulator can also take days, hours, weeks maybe even months, time that you cannot afford. Uh, so as I go on making this video, I'll try my best to be very specific. All right. I feel like the video is already going to be quite long. I'll, I'll do what I can. All right. Do keep in mind, certain games will need to be configured separately on the emulator. Uh, you're going to have to turn on a couple of settings, turn off a couple of settings. Um, you know, also certain firmwares will not support certain games. Also keep that in mind. Um, I, I will I will go in depth. Uh, I don't want to waste too much time. Okay, so um, I have read the quick start guide. You have to uh, click on this box here and then click on do not show again if you don't want to be bothered by this pop up window and then uh, hit continue. After you do that, the main software does launch. All right. Uh, and also keep in mind every day there's going to be a new update. So every time you launch this program you're going to be greeted with uh, an update screen so make sure to update it every time only then you can run the software okay so now what we're going to, have to do is install the firmware all right now um, i want to tell you something very important if you're going to install the latest firmware right now as of me making this video on the 30th of may 2024 the latest firmware is 4.91 all right as per my knowledge most games they only support 4.90 and 4.89 all right uh but like, like i said if you want uh, you can always uh, look up the uh, game so for example uh, let's just say i want to run metal gear solid uh, 4 rpcs3 we'll just go back metal gear solid 4 all right and you can see the requirements now basically if you go to the actual RPCS3 website, you'll see a compatibility tab. I'll show it to you. Hold on. Uh, and over here, it shows you GPU options that deviate from all RPCS3's default settings. So I'll show you what those default settings are. All right. Uh, so take a look over here. You have certain configurations shown here. And you're going to have to turn on these settings in order to ensure that the game does boot up properly. But do keep in mind, it all depends on your hardware. If you hit the lottery, only then these settings will even work. But if you don't even have decent hardware, some or most of these settings won't even work. So keep that in mind. All right. And also, you do need patches also. So uh, the patches are only compatible with certain PS3 firmware versions. They don't run on all firmwares, just letting you know. And also, uh, as you can see over here, uh, you do have uh, the uh, DVD, I mean, the Blu-ray serial numbers over here. I, I have to be very specific. DVD, Blu-ray, it's all the same, but still, I have to be specific. So BLES is notably the European version. Uh, it doesn't show it over here, but yeah, uh, you can see that it does say ES, right? So B L E. Whenever you see a E, an E, it means Europe. All right. And over here, you can see B L U S. Now, if you see a U and an S, or even a U, it means United States. So keep that in mind. Now, what I would personally suggest is uh, just get the U S copy of any game you're willing to emulate. That's. I feel like the U S copies have much more better patches much more better compatibility and, and I feel like they won't give you any uh, troubles in the long run. Uh, so that's just my opinion. Okay, so now, uh, like I said, uh, here's the compatibility. I, I already have the RPCS3 official website tab open here. So I'm just going to navigate back to it. Click on compatibility. Now, uh, there are currently 3,658 games with 6,220 IDs listed in their database over here on the site. So uh, as you can see, uh, these are all the games and the playable games, they are highlighted with the green color. In-game basically means you can get in the game, but they're not playable yet. And uh, this color over here, the dark orange intro means you can only get 
uh, to the intro screen you cannot proceed any further all right so as you can see uh, i've already shown it to you uh, all the important colors and you can just read through this all right when you open the site you'll know now um now let's pull up some popular games now let's take a look at infamous i think infamous is a very popular game you can even type the game over here using the search bar so infamous i'm just going to look for it and uh, you can see infamous there are multiple serial numbers over here all right so take a look at the flag that will denote now japan you can see the japanese flag js and once again you see us over here us uh, serial key now it shows in game all right so if you want to know whether the game runs or not just click on it open up a new tab i'm using the middle mouse button so you can play the game but any game that you play on rpcs3 keep in mind you will always be prone to crashes it's very difficult to play an entire game from start to finish on rpcs3 let me just tell you that no matter how high end of hardware you have even if you have a, an rtx 4090 uh, and a uh, 14900k intel cpu or on the amd side i think it's the 7950x or something like that if you have all these these beefy specs if you have an amd 7900 xtx even then you're gonna have problems so the, the you know emulation on rpc is 3 it's very 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 complex it's tough uh so even with all these configurations you can still play the game as you can see it does show you but you know do keep in mind if you hit a certain checkpoint in the game and the game stops, the game crashes, the game freezes. Hell, even if your computer reboots, if it has a hard reset, you're going to have to spend your time looking at forums on the internet, reading multiple guides and all that, watching videos such as this one. So be prepared to spend plenty of time doing a lot of research. All right. But yeah, it does say in-game. Uh, and you can also categorize, uh, you know, let's just uh, erase this box. Go back to the main page. Now you can also categorize using the playable uh, section here. And, uh, you know, just go through the list. So you can see 007 Quantum of Solace, which is not really, in my opinion, a big game right now. But yeah, back in the day, it was quite popular. It says it's a playable game. So basically, this game you can play from start to finish without any difficulties. But even then, click on it. Go through what it says. All right. Uh, and you can even see whether online features work and all that all right whether it's a multiplayer game whether if this game does have multiplayer features you can see all that um so yeah uh no options that deviate from rpcs 3s default settings basically you can just play this game using the default uh, configuration so that's good um but yeah like i said you're gonna have to spend time scrolling through this entire list which will take plenty of time alone in the dark inferno is playable now that is uh, i think back in the day this was i think a ps3 exclu exclusive correct me if i'm wrong but uh, that's good news so you can play this game so there's so much that's going on now let's look for the games that i'm going to show you today on how you uh, how you can run uh, on rpc s3 so let's take a look at god of war um so god of war is shown here god of war hd is playable 2 hd is playable now I have the God of War collection and you can see the serial numbers do differ from the actual regular God of War games. So God of War 1 and 2 HD, right? They have their own serial numbers. Look at that, NPUA. Right, and then over here, if you scroll down, God of War collection, which includes God of War 1, 2 and I think another PSP game. Not really sure about that. You can see that it does have its own serial key over here, serial number. BCUS, all right and but luckily it's playable now let's go to a more complicated game i think which is metal gear solid the metal gear solid games which are quite complicated to run people have been bashing their heads for decades trying to get these games to run uh, now you can see metal gear solid 2 sons of liberty hd edition it is playable which is good uh, but if you scroll down <laughs> take a look at this metal gear solid 3 which is also made of the similar engine from metal gear solid 2 look at that it says in game you're seeing a yellow icon every time you see a yellow icon it's like the monetization icon on youtube it's like yellow means ah man i wish it was green but you know i wish i could play this game but don't worry you can play this game but there's a lot that you have to do in order to get this game running from start to finish all right so uh yeah and of course the, the most popular game that people have been trying to run on pc Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots in-game. I did show it to you. I did show you the window before. 
I did show you the other uh, the, the uh, Wikipedia for this. Um, so Metal Gear Solid HD collection is also something that I own right now um, in game. So like I said, just click on any of these high, uh, highlighted games over here. Go through the page. Uh, look at what what's required. Uh, the, the compatibility, configuration settings, and all that. Take your time. All right. Um, see what works for you. Turn on the settings. Turn off the settings. See what works for you. Hopefully the games do run for you. All right. So this is what I wanted to explain. Okay. So uh, coming back to RPCS3. Sorry, we did get a little bit off track here. But yeah, uh, coming back to the main topic, uh, we are gonna find the firmware. All right. So firmware, uh, what I'm gonna be going for is 4.90. So let's look for PS3 firmware. 4.90 all right now over here uh you can download it from the official sony playstation website over here but yeah it does as you can see the latest one is 4.91 don't get that uh 4.90 is what i would suggest all right so the official playstation website does not have an older version but you can still acquire it on other websites so over here techspot.com you can see that it does have a 4.90 link so let's download that and uh, keep an eye on the uh, file name all right so download the file 4.90 you can also download other older uh, firmwares here so now it's downloading all right so after it's downloaded as you can see i have it on the desktop but save it where, wherever you want make sure you do access the file now uh i'm gonna try to install the firmware i didn't change the file name i think you have to change the file name i'm not sure but yeah let's install the firmware go to desktop over here and uh all pup files let's click on it so old firmware detected the newest firmware version is 4.91 ignore this but if you want 4.91 do proceed uh, at your own risk but what i'm saying do trust me 4.91 is still not compatible with a lot of PS3 games that do work on our PCS3. Just letting you know. Let's install 4.90. Alright, so it has successfully installed PS3 firmware and LLE modules. Very good, okay. So what next? Um, you gotta wait for the compilation. It'll take a while. The faster your machine, the faster this will be. Now I'm using a laptop. Uh, this laptop is not a gaming laptop. This is the Asus VivoBook Pro 15 OLED. This has a, an AMD Ryzen 5 5600H and an NVIDIA GeForce uh, RTX 3050. Not really the best of specs, but pretty decent for a uh, gaming laptop and pretty decent for, uh, you know, an emulation experience. So something that you can do while you're traveling, you know, you can pull out your controller and you, you can you can play. All right, so it has finished compiling. Now keep in mind the compilation process can take anywhere from minutes to hours. All right, so it all depends on your hardware. It's done. All right, so uh, the next thing what we are going to be doing is if you refresh the page, you can see the actual PS3 uh, XMB interface over here. Now, if you click on it, it's going to open up the XMB interface. All right. Now, every time, keep in mind, every time you open up a game on the game list. Now, this is an app. This is actually an OS, an interface. But every time you open anything up from the game list, keep in mind that it will take a lot of time to compile modules. So, yeah, just you, you, you got to be patient. You can't close anything. You can't reboot. It's not going to solve anything. Keep that in mind. Okay, so what I'm going to be showing you over here are the games. Yeah, the most interesting part. Um, so I already have a couple of games here. I have the God of War collection. Uh, and I also have the Metal Gear Solid HD collection. Both of them are the US versions of the game. Like once again, let me tell you, I cannot tell you where I got these games from. I can only show you what they look like and how you can import them into RPCS3. Okay, so if you open up the archive over here, um it has a folder inside this is how the folder of an actual ps3 game looks like on your windows pc or even mac in any other operating system so this is what it looks like so basically this is an archive i think a 7z archive yeah this is a, a zip archive and uh, this one over here is an iso file now even an iso file you can open using windows explorer now notice how it is extremely similar to the zip archive. 
basically both of them are ps3 games if you take one good look at it so this is what it needs it should look like it should basically have the ps3 underscore disk dot sfb file uh, in there and uh, yeah there's a slight bit of difference but for the most part you need to see also the ps3 underscore game file so how you can actually determine if you do have an actual ps3 game like a full-sized game with you without any incomplete files is hover over the uh, ps3 game folder with your left mouse and it should show you the size over here now this is uh, an archive so it's not going to show me but yeah um for whatever reason but uh, i think if you do right click on it click on properties oh uh, yeah you can't you cannot uh, look it up because it's in an archive anyway so uh right now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna copy this folder outside now what you can do alternatively is you can copy this folder outside the archive and paste it somewhere else and you can add this game into your game list over here or what you can do alternatively is what i'll be doing right now for you guys is if you look at the rpcs3 folder that we've just created a couple of minutes ago you go into games right uh as you can see it says disk games can be put here for automatic detection so what i'm gonna do is drag and drop this game folder here and it's gonna take a while guys so let's wait all right so even though uh if you do have windows explorer i would suggest uh, try to unzip the game uh from the archive using some other software like 7-zip i'll make sure to have the link in the description down below so that you can uh, obtain the software but what i'm going to be using right now is winra uh, i'm going to open the software using winra over here open with winra archiver and i'm going to drag and drop this folder to the games folder in the rpcs3 folder here so let's do that this should not take a long time but uh, do keep in mind, if you do use the Windows Explorer's default unarchiving uh, feature, it will take a long time. This shouldn't take that long, hopefully. But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll resume once it's uh, done. Okay, so now it has completed transferring the folder. Um, so make sure you double check RPCS3 games. All right. Uh, you can see up here through uh, the... Uh, the navigation bar up here okay so minimize or you can exit up to you and if you refresh the game is over there but guess what it says that there's an update available now you cannot update the game directly via rpcs3 so what you're gonna need for that and i'll show it to you hold on but before that make sure to make a note of the serial number all right now what you're going to need in order to update the games on RPCS3 is a software called Rusty PSN. Don't worry, I already have that in mind. So uh, let's get that software. All right, and I'll show you how you can update your games as well. Rusty PSN, just look it up and you can see it's made by a user called Rainbow Cookie 32 Shout out to you for making this software. Thank you so much. Click on the GitHub official link that pops up at the top and if you go down here look at the releases a new one came out yesterday that's interesting 0.3.8 you click on that and then you scroll down you get the windows zip uh egui uh, file over here so make sure you click on this it's only 8 mb interesting they made a new one i didn't know that all right and then once it's done downloading uh, all you have to do is open up the GUI. I'm going to save everything to the desktop so it's easy. I don't want to have to keep navigating folders uh, in this video. So uh, once again, uh, uh, Rusty PSN. This is the eGUI version. All right, so click on it and there's only an EXE, but don't worry, this is not a virus. All right, I'm pretty sure you guys might be nervous every time I show you uh, any kind of program or software or application. You might doubt that I'm trying to scam you or, or hack you. Nothing like that. All right. Everything is verified. It's all authentic. It's genuine. Uh, but it's up to you. All right. You're, you're watching the video. So you you be the judge. But anyway. So Rusty PSN. Uh, double click on the EXE over here. It does open a tiny window. And what I would suggest is make sure that you um, change the download path. And you yeah change the download path to... Uh, your C drive RPCS3 
and what I would suggest is maybe make a new folder. I don't know if it's going to work, but let's see. Update files or something like that. But make sure you add a space so that it stands out differently. Now, after you've done it, make sure you select this as the default folder for all your update package files, which is the PKG files. All right. So save the settings after you've done so. And now what we are going to do is get the update file for this game. Now, take a good look at the serial number and make sure you type it, which is BCUS98229, which is the official firmware serial number for God of War collection. All right. If you had any other version of the game, God of War 1 or 2, it could be different. But anyways, uh, after you've done typing the serial number, in the bar over here click on search for updates and you'll find a 40 mb update available so make sure you click on download all depending on your internet connection speed it'll be done instantaneously now what you do is you close the software go back over here click on file because we want to update the game all right we have to update the game so that way we can have more access to patches so uh, click on install packages wraps edats click on this and then you navigate to your C drive, RPCS3 folder, update files. And then you can see the serial number over there. And then you click on the update package file over here. Double click on it. Do you want to install this package? It asks you. Click on yes. Why not? And then it's done. So and now you can see it does not say any more update needed or anything like that. It's only the version number. All right. Okay. So now what we're going to have to do is right click on the game. We're going to boot up the game, but before that, let's connect our controller. I don't know if it shows well on the green screen. Okay, luckily it is black. But if I try showing my PS5 controller, it shows up in green for whatever reason. But yeah, black is good. So I'm going to be using my DualShock 4 controller. All right, so I'm going to turn it on. Don't worry, I'll make a whole video. Uh, depending on how much engagement this video gets, I will make another video on how you can use controllers, uh, how to set up controllers. But right now I, I can't do it. But anyway, I'm going to con connect the controller and uh yeah we will continue all right but yeah before we do that let me show you what you can do so as you can see it shows boot with default configuration now what you're gonna have to do is before you you do that head into configuration all right and um, open up any window over here but make sure you select gpu now i'm using a laptop all right as it already shows you here NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 laptop GPU, not not a CP, uh, not a uh, desktop GPU. Okay, so what you need to do is the default resolution should be at 720 recommended, but you can upscale it to 1920. Now, even though my laptop display supports only 1080p, I can upscale it up to 1440p, even 4K, 8K. It's up to me, but it all depends on how good your CPU and GPU combo is. If it's not that good, then you're going to face frame drops. All right. So I'm only going to change this. This is the only setting I'm going to change. I don't have to change anything else. I'm only going to have to select the resolution scale to 1920 by 1080, which is 150 times upscaled. All right. From 720p. So apply and then click on save. Now what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to right click on the game and select manage game patches. This is very important. Every time you try to run a ps3 game on rpcs3 make sure you have patches because the patches are the only things that will ensure that the games that you're playing do not crash all right so as you can see it shows you a window new patches are available do you want to update always click on yes 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 always now you can see that there are two games even though it's a sing single uh, serial number it's showing you two games but yeah don't worry about it now we are using version one dot oh one so right now in this video i'm only going to show you god of war one okay so click on true widescreen but don't select this option because if you do want to watch cutscenes, don't select this option skip any videos with x button don't do that uh, aspect ratio as you can see over here make sure to expand this window my bad it shows you the notes as to what each of these options will do for you so it requires uh stretch to display area all that all right so like, like it shows you you need to ensure that this one setting is turned on in the gpu tab of the actual rpcs3 uh global configuration uh, configuration settings so yeah as you can see version 1.00 uh, does not have any updates no updates but look over here 
1.01 has an additional two updates so this is why you're gonna always have to make sure that you update your games in rpcs3 with rusty psn okay so i'm only gonna apply this all right um aspect ratio we are gonna select this but because it does clearly state in the notes we're gonna try that so click on save go back to configuration i think gpu and then where's that stretch to display area we're gonna enable that also and then save now we are gonna have to connect the controller let's connect the controller it's time to start the game all right so i've connected my controller but i'm just gonna launch the game directly so what i'm gonna do is select the game left mouse left mouse uh, left mouse button i click and then boot with default configuration always make sure you select this all right and uh it's asking me to install a package but let's do it okay so the game is launching now do keep in mind it will take time to compile all the modules it could take anywhere from a couple of minutes to a few hours so be ready all right but yeah we'll get back once it's done okay the game is launching right now so how you can enter full screen mode is make sure to left click on the window here and then press on alt plus enter should enter full screen mode yeah the left alt key not the right alt key so click on the left i mean press the left alt key and then at the same time press enter okay so here we are we are in the game and uh, oh controller is not working but the arrow keys are working okay so yeah we are gonna have to set up the controller uh unfortunately so let's just do that my bad big mistake i'm gonna close the game but don't worry about that uh i thought that would work but anyway let's click on pads here and yeah here's the problem so by default uh it will already be configured to your keyboard but yeah make sure you change it to dual shock 4 and yeah, you can see my battery status and my controller is showing up here. All right, tiny mistake. So make sure you to do this. Uh, yeah, and hopefully you haven't done so already following the video. <laughs> but yeah, uh, make sure if you have a controller connected, make sure you open up the pad settings up here and then change the handler to the current controller that you're using. Anyways, okay. But yeah, I'm going to be showing all of this in a different video in the future. Okay, anyway, back to launching the game. Let's do it. Right click and boot with default configuration as usual. But it will launch faster this time because the cache has been compiled. Won't take a long time anymore. Launching the game again, as you can see. But I am recording uh, on Streamlabs on my laptop, so there might be a couple of frame drops. Game is looking good. 1080p on my 15 inch display. Now my controller is working. That's great. Hope the audio does come off. Hopefully the audio does uh, show up. And now, because you've uh, tried to launch the game now, after selecting God of War 1, um, it's going to compile another set of modules. So you have to keep putting up with the screen all the time. So once again, you need a lot of patience. So let's just wait until it's done. Okay, so the game has launched. We are going to go back to full screen mode again. Took a while, but not so long. In and you can hear the sound and the game does load up the main menu so we're gonna turn on full screen mode but yeah it is running on the laptop it looks nice um okay so new game Let's start the game over here so we are playing the game just want to show you that this game does work this is the easiest game to emulate right now without doing a lot of tinkering, provided you do have the God of War collection version of the game. Not, not, maybe even God of War 1 HD or even 2 HD, but yeah, the, I feel like the collection is much more optimized. I can see a lot of screen tearing. Hopefully, it does not show up on the video. Hopefully, the audio is still being played to you guys. Uh, all of this is spoilers, but yeah, you can skip the cutscene if you have turned on that uh, patch the patch menu but i don't want to do that i'm gonna make sure the audio is low so that nothing gets spoiled but yeah we're gonna skip to the gameplay right now just to show you that this game does run on a laptop 
So here's the game. Uh, it's kind of stretched out, but yeah, I think there was a certain setting I didn't turn on properly. Yeah, there's a lot of frame drops here, but yeah, the game does run. I think mostly the frame drops are there because uh, I am recording using Streamlabs. The Streamlabs is kind of intensive on the GPU. That's why the frames are not being rendered well, but that's okay. Well, now I'm showing you the game does run on a laptop. And I can hear my fan speed go up on the laptop. That's personally why I don't like laptops, honestly. Uh, let's turn off full screen. Should look good now. Well, it still kind of looks stretched out, but yeah. Something that you need to keep in mind is, yeah, you're going to have to go through settings one by one. But this is okay, I can manage. But yeah, uh, this is not right. This is not how the game is supposed to look. As per width goes. No pun intended. And uh, yeah, that's the game working. I don't want to play any further. In case if you haven't seen the game and you want to play it for the first time, I don't want to spoil it. Um, so I'm going to stop playing the game right here. I'm going to close the game. Uh, I think it must be one of these settings over here. But anyway, so yeah, uh, that's the basic um guide on how you can get rpcs3 set up running working and you know best example i can show you is god of war easy game to run but if you're trying to run games like metal gear solid uh the first uh three games i don't think the first game is available on yeah the, the, the metal gear solid one is available on a ps1 emulator but yeah so basically uh, uh, metal gear solid 2 and 3 and even for these games are quite hard to run Along with, you know, a whole uh, list of so many games that are quite difficult to get running on, on uh, RPCS3. But yeah, this should uh, clear all your questions. I'll uh, see if I can make further videos, more guide videos. I've already made uh, two videos on my channel. Do check them out. I've made an MGS4 video for the Illusion build of RPCS3. Now, what you're looking at over here in this video is the official build. So, and uh, there are custom builds of RPCS3 designed to make certain specific games run properly without any crashes any issues whatsoever and those are made by independent developers all right so those are they are not official versions of the emulator but they are they are they are uh, modded versions of rpcs3 uh so you're gonna have to be careful all right uh, no matter what you're gonna have to be careful if you're gonna um get those emulators those those modded emulators running on your computer or laptop so so do keep an eye out do your research uh, check reddit read, read forums you know get uh get knowledgeable about things is what i would suggest to you so something to note you know um so it would really help me if you can uh, hit the like button on this video if you can subscribe to my channel turn on bell notifications for everything that way you don't miss out on any similar content uh, this video I should have put out weeks ago, but because I have a stream schedule every day. I mean, basically, I don't have a stream schedule, but because I do stream once every day, I haven't had time. Uh, n uh, now I do have some time off, so I'm able to make this video. Uh, hopefully, th this does answer your questions. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. But uh, yeah, uh, I will try to respond to comments as much as I can. Don't think I'm ignoring you guys, but there are some really silly comments that make me laugh. Or, you know, comments that are not really uh, descriptive enough. Uh, so those comments i just can't bother responding to no offense and also i will not be responding to any comments asking for the game uh, links for websites where you can get the games for free uh hell no i'm not going to be doing that so hopefully you don't mind my apologies you know if you do feel like this video was a waste of time if you don't like me whatever the case just hit the dislike button you know it still does help me uh, engagement is engagement no matter what but yeah hopefully uh, this video does help you guys um uh, let me know if you have any ideas, if you have any questions, do feel free to ask them down in the comments below and I'll see if I can make further follow-up videos to this one, further guides, stuff like that. This video already took like an hour for me to make and even with a script, uh, yeah, the, the whole setting up part of the video, I didn't have a script, but yeah, the, the earlier start of the video, I did have a script. The script was not that hard to make, so all in all, I think it took me maybe 2-3 hours to make this video, but yeah, it, it I had to find time to make this video so this video was supposed to be out by the first week of may now we are at the end of may it's it's the uh, 30th of may as of me recording this i don't know when this video is gonna go out but hopefully i do find time to put it out before this month ends but uh, yeah thanks to all of you guys for being patient um i should have made this video long back even before i've made uh, the mgs4 guides 
but yeah, uh, it's just uh, my 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 channel, guys. My channel is not being recommended up in the algorithm, even though I do make decent content, decent guides, uh, low effort content out there. You know, I I saw some some uh, video out here that has an MGS4 guy that's got like over you know thirty thousand views, and he, you know that's not even a channel that's monetized. It doesn't have a face. So, but anyway, I'm not I'm not judging anybody. I'm I no no judgment uh, intended. It is what it is, though. Uh, I feel like uh, channels that do put out content regularly will not end up getting a lot of engagement. Whereas channels that do put out content every once in a while, they end up getting a lot of engagement for whatever reason. But then again, I'm not. I'm not upset. I'm just happy to make this video. For me, YouTube is is a passion. It's a hobby. I don't consider it as a job. I don't consider it, I consider it as a headache. Uh, you know, if I do make money, then that's just a bonus of it. But uh, then again, I'm not expecting money from anyone. But uh, hopefully, this video has helped you guys and. Uh, yeah, I'm going to end the video right here. I appreciate you guys' precious time in watching this video. All that being said, uh, this is Anderson Gaming signing out. Peace out to all of you fine folks. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay happy. And until then, um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye, guys. Thank you all so much. See you in the next one.